Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. Welcome back to our series on Blender for AI developers. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through making an object, and the goal is to create something that we can use in our next video, which will be focused on UV mapping and materials. But in order to do that, we wanna have sort of an interesting shape, and I thought I would use this as an opportunity to teach a few more modeling concepts and show you how flexible Blender is and how you can get from just a few primitive shapes to the model that you're looking for. So with that, let's get started. We're not going to use anything that's in this scene, so you can hit the A key and you'll notice the, that'll show up down there in the bottom left, and then X to delete these and then just click delete. We're gonna start off with a circle and we're going to actually make a cylindrical pillow, but I'm gonna make it in a completely different way. Ordinarily, you might actually start with a cylinder sh primitive shape, but I'm gonna show you how you can create your own shapes from even simpler shapes. So we're going to create, and we'll go to the add menu here, and we're gonna create a mesh, and we're going to start with a circle. And a circle by default is going to be just showing up flat, sort of on the floor, the imaginary floor here. And we can leave the vertices the same, and the radius is probably a little big for a pillow, so maybe we do something more like, um, I don't know, 10 centimeters. So 10 cm, and that'll set it to 0.1 meters. So this is uh, all right. We'll hit tab now, and that's gonna take us into edit mode. And then we can rotate this, around the x-axis. So I'm going to hit R, X, and that'll make it rotate around this x-axis. And then I'm going to look up in this top left corner and see, okay, I want this to be about 90. Okay, so the idea here is we're gonna start with this circle and we're going to have it become a sort of a tube-shaped pillow. Now I would like this pillow to start a little further out um, over here, so I'm still in edit mode. I'm going to do G to move it, and then I'm going to lock it to the Y axis and kind of estimate, looks like maybe around like 0.35, so I'll type in 0.35 and hit enter. And now I've got a circle that's going to be the edge of one end of this pillow. Now, again, this is not necessarily the way you would normally do this, but I'm doing this just to teach a different method for creating shapes and, and parts of shapes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you how you can fill in one of these as a circle. If you ever need to fill in a circle end cap of something and you don't wanna create a new circle that fills in the sort of the pie pieces for all of this, what you can do is hit E for extrude and you'll see that this is kinda of hard to work with like this. I, I don't really want to move it anywhere like this, but if I right click, it'll cancel it and it looks like it's gone, but they're actually still there. So I can now hit S to scale and it's as long as it's set to a mode that works while wow, I'm trying to show with my cursor up here, um, right here, make sure this isn't on like uh, centering on the cursor or something, uh, then you should have a an ability to um, extrude them and then well, not after you've extruded them, then you can scale them down. So I'm gonna do something like this. And in fact, if I wanna go all the way to the bottom or all the way to the center, I can actually S and then type in zero. And now all of these points are here. And so we've created something that's very similar to if you were to fill in uh, the circle when you created it in the first place. Now the catch here is all of those vertices are still there. And you can see that if you go to here, and type in, or go to the statistics one, it's gonna show up here. I have 32 vertices selected. So that's not really what I want. If I click, click away, now I have zero, but if I select all these, um, I have another problem where it is now only picking one of them at a time. So if we toggle X-ray mode, that'll allow us to select all of them at once. You see it, we have 32 of them again. You can turn that off. And we wanna merge these. So we'll go into vertex, and then we just need to find merge. It might be in mesh. Yeah, okay, it's in mesh. 
merge at center. Okay, and so it's merged all of those and now we have one vertex selected. And even if we go here into x-ray mode, you'll see only one vertex selected. So that is ideal, that's what we want. So this is one end of our pillow. Um, we're actually gonna use this circle again on the other end of the pillow. And what I'll do is I will take this and I know that this was 0.35 in this direction. So I'm going to shift D, which will duplicate it, hit Y to move it along this Y axis. And then I want this to be negative seven or negative 0.7. And that would be 0.35 times 2, um, so that's 0.7. Another thing you could do here is you could take a look at what the y position is of all these. And since they're all in the same plane, they'll have all the same y value. And then you can select this and you can just make it the negative version of that. You could type in negative 0.35 and you would end up getting uh, the value you're looking for. So now we have these two ends of the, the cylinder that we're making this weird way. And then we want to bridge these edges, these outer edges here. So we're gonna switch into edge mode and I'm gonna hit Alt to select the, or hold Alt and left click to select the outer edge here. I'm gonna hold the Shift key and then Alt again and then click here. So now you'll see that we have both of these selected, both of these edges. And we should be able to go into edge and bridge edge loops. And now you can see that this has bridged these loops. So that was a super weird way to make a cylinder, but I wanted to show you that you can do that um, if you're ever in a situation where you found yourself, maybe you've extruded something out and you have sort of a, a cap to fill like this, you can do it that way. Or if you have a, a sort of a something to bridge, that's, that's one way you can do it. All right, now I another reason I intentionally did this was I wanted to show you about the uh, face orientation. So face orientation shows you which direction the faces are pointing. So blue indicates that the face is pointing outward and red indicates that the wrong side of the face is visible. So what exactly does that mean? So a face always points in one direction and it has a back but usually back faces are not intended to be facing outward. And that's definitely true if you were to export this. For example, if you took this into Unity, this face right here, even though it appears to be there um, in Blender, it's not gonna show up. It's gonna look something like, if we turn on back face culling, if we're in this, um, in this mode, it's gonna look like that inside uh, unity if we were to import it and that's obviously not what we want so we would like to fix that problem so let me turn this back on so that we can see it and we're going to turn on face orientation again so we can double check and make sure we get everything now you can go to uh, you can tab into edit mode and hit a to select everything and you have a couple options you can either go to normals and recalculate outside, which that immediately figures it out, or we could select these faces here. So I'm gonna click away, or, uh, shift A, wait, sorry, alt A, deselects. I'm gonna show you how to select all of these faces really easily. We'll, we'll switch into face mode. We can hit C, and then you can actually draw all of these and then hit enter and then that will select all of those faces. You can go to Mesh, Normals, and Flip. So those are just two ways that you can make sure that your normals are pointing in the right direction. And that's something I recommend that you do anytime you're making a new mesh, especially if you're getting creative with how you're making it because you might have something pointed in the wrong direction. All right, so now what we're going to do is make this look a little bit more like a pillow. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, and a pillow typically is a little more stuffed in the center than on the edges. So what we'll do is we'll use our edge loop tool, that's Control-R, and we can maybe 
um, scroll up. Uh, two is fine. We don't need to get super detailed on this. And then what we'll do is we will do S and we'll want to scale it, but I'm not going to scale it along the Y axis. So I'm going to do Shift Y, which will make it so that it only scales along the red and blue axes, the X and Z. And we'll just make it a little bit fatter in the center. Okay, so now we've got this pillow that's a little bit fatter in the center. I think it makes sense to do that on the sides too. So we'll do Control R. Oh, and Control R doesn't work in this case. So that is kind of a problem uh, if we wanted to use a loop cut, but we don't have to use a loop cut in this case. We make sure we go into uh, face mode. I just hit the three key to do that. We will select all of these faces, hit enter, and we can use our inset, so I, and that will inset it kind of like this. And I'll just type in 0 0.05, and then I'm just going to move this out a little bit. So G, Y, and then just kind of move it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So C, select all of these, enter. Let me just double check. Oh, it looks like I still have those selected. So let me show you another trick. You can hit C and you can middle mouse click, hold that down, and that will deselect things and hit enter. Okay, so this is still selected. We can do I and it really doesn't matter. I, I don't know why I worried about being so precise before. I'm just going to set it to something that looks good. G, Y, and kind of puff it out a little bit. Okay, so now we've got this really kind of weird looking pillow. Um, and the last thing I'm going to show you how to do is we're going to add some piping along the outside. So by that I mean like the sort of um, circular tube of fabric that might go around the outside of a pillow. So this one is going to require us to center our cursor at the center of this ring here so that we can create a torus that's going to be right around the edge. So let's go into edit mode. So we'll tab in. We're going to switch into edge mode and then alt and click to select this edge. Now we're going to move this cursor and this is where this cursor really comes in handy. We can do shift S and we can move the cursor to selected. And now you can see that that cursor is in the center, the dead center of this ring right here. So now that we have the cursor there, if we create a new object, so we go to add mesh and we do a torus, for example, it's centered right here instead of centered at the origin where the cursor was originally. So now we want to make this the right size. And obviously this is huge and not what we're looking for. So let's rotate this to start around the x-axis by 90. And let's do the... Uh, let's see, we need to change the major radius and the minor radius. So let's change the minor radius first, just to get it a lot smaller. And then we'll bring this down kind of like this. Okay, so this is really fat. Um, we're going to have to keep tweaking this until we get it to look kind of the way we want it to. Um, this is still too big, and if we keep pressing down, it's going to, uh, it will stop. It'll go down to zero, 01. So let's try zero, zero, 001 here. And that looks like maybe about the right size. I might just do up to 002. That's good. And then we just need to change this major radius so that it looks like it's about right. And I'm thinking that looks good. So we've got a major radius of 0.1 meters and a minor radius of 0 0.002 meters. And this is positioned at that 0.35 meters and 90 degrees rotated. So that's cool. Uh, the only downside is they're not connected. And I want to show you a couple things you can do. So first of all, what I can do is select the object that I want to join to the bigger object first. Well, it doesn't have to be physically bigger. It's just the one that you want to be the complete object is the one you sh should select last. So click the one that you're going to attach to it first and then hold shift and click. And then what we're going to do is do object join. 
Okay, so now this is actually part of this shape. And if I am in edit mode for, well, it's called circle. You can probably rename this at this point. Pillow. I just double clicked to get that. Um, and then if, if I hit A, it's gonna select all of these points. So in some case, this is, a, this is good um, because you want all of them, but now we have a little bit less access to those edges like we did before because I can't actually see them. So it, it's good to know how to separate that again too. So let me just show you how to do that. So what I'll do is I'm gonna select basically anything on this torus and I'm gonna select faces by size. I never remember exactly. Select linked, that's probably it. Yep, there we go. Sometimes you just need to go into the select menu and figure out. There's lots of different options. You can select by material, you can select, there's so many different options. So whenever you're looking for how to select something, you'll just have to kind of go exploring a little bit like I do. Uh, so now I have the option if I want to, to separate selection and you can actually see now that that's, that's split off again. But I don't actually want to do that right now. So I'm going to undo all that. And because I have all this selected, I'm gonna duplicate this, Shift D, and I'm going to move it along the Y axis to, or by minus 0.7, enter. Okay, so now I've got this pillow and it's got these, um, nice looking little uh, ridges on the outside, or what did I call that, piping. And the only downside to any of this, I think, is that it doesn't look smooth at all. So uh, we'll just do this really quick just to show you. Uh, you can right click and shade smooth, and now that looks a little bit better. Of course it's shiny, but we'll, we'll come back to that. The only thing that's weird now is we've got some, uh, some of the same stuff that was happening in the previous video with the uh, with the battery, we're getting some of these. So if you remember, the way we fixed that was by adding edge loops or beveling. And so we can add a few more edge loops to kind of fix this problem. You'll notice that there's some weird stuff, kind of weird shading happening over there too. So let's see if we can fix that. We'll hit tab, we'll do a control R, and then we can kind of bring this up to the edge. Control R over here, and we'll do the same over here. And you really don't need to be super precise with this. We're just exploring. If you were working on something that needed to look super realistic, then you might be a little more precise than I'm being. I'll do another one here and click, and then I can kind of scale this out to the edge. And then I'll do another one over here, Control R, just like that. Okay, so now this looks much smoother, much better. And when we apply a material to it, it's gonna look pretty good. And one last thing to mention, since your cursor is now over here, if you want to reset that to the center, there's a couple ways to do it. So you can always go to view and you can change the location of the cursor manually. So right now it's set at 0.35. You can also do shift C and that will change the location of the cursor to 000. So that's it for this video. I know this was kind of long and hopefully not super overwhelming, but at least a tour of some of the different options you have to you have to use for uh, creating different shapes, assuming you don't always have the easiest you know object to make, and you don't have something that's in this menu of options. You can create your own, and just be aware that you need to maybe mess with some edge loops. Maybe you need to check to make sure that your face orientation is correct. All of that. But thank you for watching, and if you're interested in continuing this, we'll be coming out with another video. And in that video, you can learn the materials that we'll be applying to this, as well as how UV mapping works.